This is the uh, notes for section 2.1, the need for definitions. If you haven't done so already, you should uh, read section 2.1 at this time before going on with the notes. You should have uh, already taken care of that. Um, first of all, just the big idea in this section is the definitions of mathematical terms are explicitly stated both for clarity and because it is important in communication that people use the same meaning for a term. Okay, So if you think about some words in the English language are not explicitly stated. We, we, they may have a different meaning depending on who's talking or using that word. The word love or success, tall, small, big, uh, all of those terms are somewhat ambiguous. They, they, there's not a specific definition for them. And because of that, um, and that's that's deliberate. Um, it, it's really left up to the person using the, the, the word to kind of determine what they mean by that word. In math, uh, and especially in geometry, we have to be much more specific with uh, what how we're defining things. Okay, so most terms that we use in mathematics need to be explicitly stated. So when the term is used, everyone is working with the same definition. Okay, so here's example one. It says, what squares appear in this figure? Explain why you made your choices. So as you look at that picture, it's not... It, it's deliberately not very specific. So as, as, as you look at that, here's the ones that I feel look like they're, they're probably squares, and that's CDGF and DEKJ. Okay? And the reason why I picked those to be squares is it looks as though uh, they have four equal sides and four right angles. So a square when we, a more formal definition of square is that it has four equal sides and four right angles. Um, and those are the only two that figures there that would have that. The other figures that are there uh, appear to be either rectangles or parallelograms. And we'll get into the definitions of all of those types of figures a little bit later on in this course. At this time, if you could just take a few minutes and, and make sure you get the answer down to that, that example number one. But if you could just take a few minutes now to do the guided example one in your book and then write on this, uh, in this area down here, if you could, could list uh, the answer to the last question below. Uh, what four-sided figures appear to be rectangles, and then we'll go over that in just a minute. And in the uh, example number one up here, is this words appear to be? Um, the word appear means that we although we, we may not know exactly that it's a square or exactly that it's a rectangle, it looks like it might be that figure. Okay, So if I'm looking at the, the in this guided example, the, the figures there that are, are that appear to be rectangles, these would be the six figures that I would come up with. And remember, you can have the order of those letters really doesn't matter as long as you're going uh, in order clockwise or counterclockwise, but those should be the six figures that you have. And it might take you a little bit of time to make sure that you have those. Uh, but the reason why they appear to be is it looks like all of those have four right angles. And the definition of a rectangle is it has four, is a four-sided figure with four right angles. Okay? This definition allows us to determine if a figure is a rectangle. We cannot assume an angle is right so when, we, when we're looking at a, a rectangle, it's more important that we know that, that those angles are right angles. And the symbol that we'll use for that is this symbol right here. So anytime you put a little square box uh, in the angle, that would indicate that it's a right angle. So in, in that guided example, those are the ones that appear to be right angles. In order for us to know that for sure, we would have to have markings indicating that they were right angles. Okay, the next uh, section of your notes is on defining geometric terms. Geometric terms are carefully defined. Learning their precise definition will be important in this course and in the development of geometry. 
Uh, I've got this this activity here. We'll talk about that one in class a little bit more. Um, but I'd like to go down then and look at the idea of convex sets. Okay. When we talk about convex, basically what we're saying is we're saying that a figure has no dents. So if it's convex, it doesn't have any dents. Okay. If it does have dents, we refer to it as non-convex. Okay. Well, a more specific definition of a convex set is a set of points in which every segment that connects points of the set lies entirely in the set. So we can see that if we if we take any point that's in the figure, another point that's in the figure, if I draw a line segment between those two points, all the points on the line segment are also within that figure. Okay? If that happens for all points within the figure, we say that the figure is convex. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more of a, a, a nice easy way of finding that um, a little bit later on when we look at polygons, but that's, that's the definition of a convex set. Now if it's a non-convex set, it looks more like this drawing over here. And you'll notice that in this situation, if I pick two points, say this point and this point, which are you know, part of that set, if I draw my line segment, that line segment goes outside the figure. Therefore, we would refer to that figure as non-convex. Now, going back to our general definition of dense and no dense, you'll notice that this one has no, no dense in it. Whereas this one does, it's like, you know, it indents into the figure, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the second example. It says, determine if the figures are convex or non-convex and justify your answer. So let's look at figure one. Well, in figure one, okay, we would say that that is convex because if I take and I draw any segments, all the segments connecting all the points in the figure would lie completely within the figure. Okay, So if I pick a point like for instance right here and I pick another point say right here, if I draw that line segment that line segment is completely within inside the figure. Now it's not just one thing that we have to test it for, but I think you can see that that's going to happen for every one of them. So really what you want to look for once again is that that counterexample or, or a situation where um, uh, where it doesn't lie completely within the figure. Okay. If I look at figure two, that would be non-convex because if I draw a, a line segment connecting say for instance these two points, that line segment is going to go outside the figure, therefore it would be non-convex. And then the same thing would apply with figure three. If I pick two points, if I draw that line segment connecting those two points, you'll notice that I go outside the figure. Okay, the last thing I'd like you to do on this video is just take a few minutes, uh, pause the video at this time, and do this guided example number two. Um, you can do it right here on your notes and then uh, turn the video back on and I will go through the answers uh, to that guided example. <laughs> Okay, here's the answers then to those four question marks. Figure one is convex because the segment connecting the points in the figure lie in the figure. Figure two is non-convex because the line connecting the lower left and the lower right vertices does not lie in the figure. And then finally, figure three is convex because all segments connecting points in the figure are in the set. Thank you.